Hi, my name is Rochelle Grow, and I'm obsessed with all things business, especially networking. Oftentimes, the opportunities that we have in business and even personally comes down to who we know. I love helping people build a thriving network with genuine people, even if they are new to the game, afraid to say the wrong thing, or need a reminder to just do it. I'm a California transplant living in Northern England who's taken her business chops from California to New York and now the US to the UK. I work from home and run two businesses. No matter if you're a networking beginner or not, I can teach you the step-by-step behind the scenes secrets to building a network that you love. Pop in your earbuds and get ready to be encouraged and have some fun while you learn. This is Allergic to Small Talk by Cut Class. Welcome back to Allergic to Small Talk. You can catch me here every week or on Insta at It's Row Grow. All right, y'all, let's get started. About a decade ago in 2012, I met one of my business partners, Leslie, when we started our executive MBA program at Pepperdine. Leslie, Sho, and I co own Cut Class. When I met Leslie all those years ago, we were instant friends from the moment we saw each other. Early on in our friendship, Leslie invited me to a Korean spa day with her friend I had never met. And I was super stoked to A, be invited, B, experience a new culture, and C, to have a relaxing ass day. But it wasn't until we were getting out of the car at the valet stand did Leslie say, oh, by the way, you have to get naked at this spa. My smile and excitement turned to a chuckle, and that turned to WTF. As I walked towards the front door, here's what was going on in my brain. Leslie and I are early on in our friendship. I literally just met her friend about 30 minutes prior to getting in this stupid ass spa place. And now I'm expected to take part in a spa experience naked, not only in front of them, but other random women I don't know. My heart sank. I felt so insecure about other women seeing my stretch marks on my thighs and on my butt and my nails weren't done. I wasn't groomed. So many thoughts were racing in my head. As we got inside, I took off all my clothes and walked around exploring all of the amenities, and it was actually super cool. I bring this story up because it was a situation where I felt like, this is so not me. It's moments like this when I realize that when I do things that I think are so not me, I often find out the most about myself and even in the most uncomfortable situations, the uncomfortableness does wear off. And speaking of uncomfortable moments, have you ever been to an event for your business or even something personally and totally wrote off people because of how they looked, how they sounded, or how they presented themselves? And then later, you felt uncomfortable because you realize they're actually a super cool human being? If that's you, I totally get it. I've been guilty of writing people off because they were too boisterous or they were too quiet or for so many other things. So while on today's episode, I won't be catfishing you to a day out at a naked spa and then getting your dead skin scrubbed off by a Korean grandma in lingerie. Yes, that really happens at the Korean spa. I do challenge you to take the plunge with someone you might write off at your next gathering, be that for business or personal. So here are some challenges. Challenge one, if you see someone at an event you're shying away from, it could be for so many reasons. Maybe it's a super gorgeous man or woman or person. You might be thinking, damn, they won't talk to me. Or maybe it's someone who's not dressed well, or maybe it's someone that has a strong personality or someone that's as quiet as a mouse. Challenge yourself to identify that person in the room. Ask yourself, what about them makes you uncomfortable? And that uncomfortableness could also just be fear. I remember when I first started my executive MBA program, we had a weekend long induction where we got to meet the professors and more importantly, the rest of the people in our cohort. One of the activities that we had to complete was creating teams of three to four, and these teams would stick together and work on collaborative projects for the duration of our 20 weeks we'd be on program. So as you can imagine, judging and evaluating everyone in that room was at an all-time high. 
It was so fierce. The professors and the staff left us alone and let us figure out the process on our own. I think we spent something like 15 hours figuring out who was on which team. One of my cohort buddies, Josh Host, has a very big personality. And he says things like, life domination and I'll conquer all. And at the time, I remember thinking, hell no, I don't want to be on his team. And it wasn't because he was annoying or loud. At the core of it, I was actually intimidated by him. But as our program took shape, I got to know Josh. He's a totally freaking sweetheart, caring, smart, and I hate to admit it, damn guy is dominating the world. He's a badass entrepreneur and father and friend. If I could go back now, I would have spent more time getting to know Josh over that induction weekend rather than thinking his personality was too big for me. If you've been or find yourself in a similar situation, don't run away from that person. Question what really is the reason why that person is getting under your skin. You might find that the challenge lies within yourself. All right, challenge number two. You know the homeless people or the beggars you see on the street that most people avoid locking eyes with because they think they're going to ask them for money. And when they do, people might say, sorry, I don't have cash on me. If that's you, I challenge you to look at them in the eye and say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You might not be able to give cash, but you can give them acknowledgement. My husband thinks I'm nuts, but I always give what I can, whether it's my umbrella because it's pouring down or an extra sandwich from Greg's. If you're in America listening to this, Greg's is sort of like fast food here in England, and it's like reasonably priced stuff too. Now, I'm not saying to do this to every person you see in need, but it's getting in the practice of learning that you can be a contribution to others. If you can help someone on the street, you can certainly be a contribution to someone that you've misjudged in a room full of people. Challenge number three, speak to the person that you're quote unquote put off by. Listen, if the person is for real a jerk, don't talk to that asshole. But if it's something that's just making you annoyed or uncomfortable, go chat with them. I know this might be a big step for some of you listening out there, but think about who that person might know. What if you find out you have some commonalities or maybe you end up finding out that you can collaborate on something? Don't be guided by your perception and judgment. Go find out for yourself so you don't have to feel weird about it later. And challenge number four, what is something people often get wrong about you? How does it make you feel when that happens? People usually know themselves better than you think. So if you are thinking about writing someone off because of X, Y, Z, it's highly likely the other person already knows about it. So if you speak to that person in the room that makes you uncomfortable, use this question as an icebreaker. What do people usually get wrong about you? All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, can you please leave me a written review on Apple Podcasts? Your written review will mean so much to me. It will allow my podcast to get bumped up and allow more people to discover me. All right, I look forward to catching you next week. See ya.